you guys, it's vlog day. This is Officer Giordano. We're out here in Little Havana doing a follow-up with the MODIS class that just graduated. They're out here putting up some cones, getting ready to start their DOI checkpoint. So let's head over there and check them out and see what they're doing. Officer Tarjia. What's up, brother? How you doing, brother? I see you over here, you got the, you're in the traffic uh, homicide car. Yes, sir. But you're not assigned the traffic homicide. No, the traffic homicide is actually a branch as, long, as well as the motors unit on the traffic enforcement unit. That also includes our DUI unit as well. All right, so let me ask you a question about this DUI checkpoint. I know some of us, we think that, that the uh, police officers just spring a checkpoint out of nowhere. Is there any type of procedures or anything that you have to do ahead of time to let the public know that there is going to be a checkpoint? Or is this totally random and you guys just do it whenever you feel like it? Well, we actually go ahead and contact different media outlets to go ahead and advertise it to the public, to the general public, that there is going to be a, a DUI checkpoint, not to catch the public by surprise. Alright guys, I want to introduce you to Officer Fernandez. We used to be partners together back in Upper East Side PST. He's moved on to Traffic Homicide. Traffic Homicide. You're out here running the DUI checkpoint along with the motors officers, right? Yes, my role here in the DUI checkpoint, I drive the Batmobile you see right behind me. You drive the Batmobile? Yes, I do. Does that make you Batman? Uh, I guess it does. That's <laughs> <laughs> the Batmobile is really the breath alcohol test mobile. It's a big white RV behind us. I also run the intoxilizer inside that does breath uh, alcohol testing to the subjects. We bring the subject in the back for the secure cell and we sit them down and that's when we uh, uh, conduct our test. I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen the inside of this. Do you mind if we go check it out? No, let's get take a tour. All right, so we're inside the Batmobile right now, and if you're brought inside of here, that's not a good thing. So here we conduct our breath alcohol test. This is the Intoxilizer 8000. It tests uh, the uh, alcohol level of a uh, breath, a uh, deep breath from a person. The person who's uh, been arrested for DUI will be sitting right in here, and we uh, usually use this hose to reach over for him to give a sample of his breath. All right, so that instrument that you just saw is also calibrated, right? Calibrated every month. Every month. Every month you have to calibrate this instrument to make sure that it's accurate. So what's the other side over here? Once the subject already gave a sample of his breath, then the officers come over here and work on the uh, paperwork, while the other officer is uh, detaining the, uh, keeping an eye on the subject in the back. So these are just workstations where the officers will work. So there's always two officers here at one time? Yes. And what about this side of here? What's, what's behind door number two? Just the driver's seat. The driver's seat. Mm -hmm. All right, so you saw the inside of the Batmobile. We're gonna head outside and catch up with the DUI units and see some more of what they're doing. The DUI checkpoint has begun. The officers are on the line and cars are starting to roll through now. We're gonna go meet up with the lieutenant so we can get a little more clarification on why this DUI checkpoint is going on today. All right, guys, so I'm going to pause, take a little break from this DOI checkpoint. I have to go do a Facebook Live with the commander of Little Havana. Commander Papier is out here tonight. So we're going to do a little something on Facebook Live. If you want to see it, check out our Facebook account, link down here, and you can see how the interview went. All right, guys, so I'm back. I'm here with the Lieutenant of Motors, Lieutenant Ferrer. He's going to explain the process of the DOI checkpoint. Lieutenant, how are you? How you doing, Drew? Doing How's good. everything? Good to see you. So what we have is three lanes here. One is the lane where the officers stand for their safety zone, which is this far uh, right lane to my right here. The middle lane is what we call the shoot lane. Basically, all the vehicles that we're stopping are going to be in this middle lane. There's an officer at the other end. He's having the vehicle screen and come in. The vehicles are done randomly. There is no specific targeting on the vehicles. All the vehicles that come in here are random vehicles. Once we have 10 vehicles that come in through the middle of the chute, we'll hold these vehicles, we'll in interview the drivers, and then the other lane continues uh, going westbound on 7th Street. If you're a person that does get pulled over, it's very quick, it's a 30 second. Correct, uh, the stop is 30 seconds. What people can expect when they're, uh, when they're approached by the officers is, the officers are gonna introduce themselves and advise them that we are conducting a DUI checkpoint and we're checking for impairment. 
they will be asked for their driver's license. If there is no signs of impairment and they have a driver's license with them, then they will be able to continue going westbound. If there's any discrepancies where there might be a impairment or a, a driver's license violation, then they will be pulled off to the right lane as that vehicle is right there. Enforcement will be conducted on that uh, driver. So we went through all the process of a DOI checkpoint. It is put out to the media in advance and this is a, um, a randomized event that takes place, but I'm gonna let the lieutenant uh, take over and explain the real mission behind the DUI checkpoint and why this is really done. The real mission of the checkpoint is to keep everyone safe. The last thing we want is a tragedy. So that's what we're trying to prevent is a tragedy tonight for somebody being impaired driving and possibly either injuring or killing you know, uh, a person. I know this firsthand because in 2006, my sister was killed by a DUI. So I know how much it could impact the family, as well as other persons driving, uh, driving drunk. It is a problem. It will give you uh, financial issues. You will get arrested and you will be going through uh, the legal system. And it's not something you really want to go to. There's a lot of options out there these days. You know, call a family member, call a friend, call a taxi. You have now, nowadays you have Uber and Lyft, which are everywhere. Call one of them and prevent a tragedy from ending somebody's life because you were careless in your actions and they didn't have good judgment instead of just picking up the phone or using your smartphone to call an Uber Lyft or a family friend. Yeah guys, so the real purpose of a DUI checkpoint is about saving lives. You know, if you're old enough to drink, drink responsibly. If you're not old enough to drink, don't drink at all. You have plenty of time in your life to do that. So, Lieutenant, I'm gonna let you go back to manning the line and we're gonna go see what's going on. I noticed that we have a bunch of cars over there yes, that have do. been getting pulled over, so yes. let's go check out what's going on with them and uh, you know get updated on the status of what's happening in this DUI checkpoint. Okay, dude. All right, okay. Thank you. you. Got it. Ma'am, you know you need to carry your view on you at all times, okay? So just give me a second. One of my officers is gonna write you a quick uh, citation. Sarge, I noticed you're talking to someone in the car. Yes, sir. The driver, I, I, what happened over I, there with her? Well, one of the officers stopped her. Uh, she, they asked her for her driver's license. She didn't have her on her. On her. Mm -hmm. So they had her pulled in here. So we just double check just to make sure that she does have a driver's license, which she does. But it is a, a violation to not be carrying your driver's license on you when, you when you're driving. So that's a good point. You guys, if you are able to drive and you have a driver's license, you've got to have it on you. Yes, you at all a, times. At all times. You get a ticket if you don't carry Correct. it. Correct. So make sure, keep your license on you. Yes, do it. All right. Thank you. you. Got it. Looks like a lot of cars have been pulled over. I see about seven of them so far since I started the vlog. I had to do Facebook Live, and as the Facebook Live is going on, these cars are being pulled over. So we're going to go now to the command center and catch up with Officer Fernandez and see what's going on over there. Oh, Officer Fernandez. Hey, how are you doing? Talking about you. Yeah, where are you? <laughs> what's going on over here? I saw a bunch of cars getting oh. pulled over. Yeah, most of them uh, driving without a license or other violations, arrestable violations, so uh, the officers over there are processing them and the PSAs are doing the toaster. All right, all right. So a DUI checkpoint is a pretty big operation. You have an assigned tow company that comes out here. We have PSAs, traffic homicide, we have the motors unit. So it's pretty big, got a few people in handcuffs for driver's license violations. So it's very important that you guys, if you have your license, check online and make sure that your status of your license is accurate and up to date. Very important to do that. You don't want to go through the checkpoint and find out that you have a suspended license when you thought it was good. We're going to go check up with the officers. I know Officer Tarzia is up here demanding one of the seats in the command center. What are you guys doing over here on the computer now? Well, uh, we're finishing up uh, arrest forms. Every single time we get an arrest, we bring them over here. We, uh, that's what we do, our arrest forms. We're also generating any uh, criminal tickets or citations, anything that has to go along with the defendant. So when someone's pulled over at the DUI checkpoint and there's a violation or a reason for them to be arrested, they will be processed here at the scene. They have a prisoner transport van that acts as a temporary holding cell so that an officer can come and transport them to the jail. All right, so we have our PSAs out here. They're helping us out. You guys write the toe slips, right? Yes. And you help man the command center. Yes. Once they finish with the toe slips, they give it to the toe and they're able to take the car and leave, right? They take right? the car, yes. They sign off on it and they take the car. So we have to inventory the car though before they go. All right, so you said you guys have to do an inventory. Basically an inventory is they check the inside of the vehicle for personal belongings that the owner has, 
make sure that they jot it all down on the tow slip so that when the owner goes to the tow yard, they pick up their vehicle, everything that's in the car stays in the car and they can leave with their personal belongings intact. Yes. So I'm gonna let you go ahead, get back to doing what you're doing, and I'll see you later. All right, thank you. All right, so if you're wondering what happens if your car gets towed, I'm here with Ramon from America Tow. He's gonna explain the steps to get your car out of the impound if you are arrested or if someone you know has been arrested during a DUI checkpoint and their car was towed. Ramon, let me ask you. I see we got a lot of cars here. There's already what, two being put up. You have about three or four more four to more go. And then four that was taken already. Four that was taken already. Four wow. taken already. Wow. Um, what's the process? How do these people get their cars out? So you would need a current registration, driver's license. You gotta make sure you are the registered owner. If you're not the registered owner, you will not get your vehicle out. So very important. What do you have to be? The registered owner. If you're not the registered owner, you will not get your vehicle out. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Registration, be the registered owner, and have your driver's license. That's correct. And obviously, you gotta pay you the gotta fine. You gotta pay the fine. All right, all right, Ramon, have a Thank good you. one. Thank you, you too. All right, we got Officer Ortiz out here. If you remember the previous vlog, who was from the graduating motors class. How you doing, brother? So good. So I notice. I noticed that you're at the front. You're the head of the checkpoint tonight. Yeah, I'm the head of checkpoint. So I'm, I'm the I'm the stop guy. I'm stopping the first car. I'm verifying the car that it was let in. It's a car that meets me. I'm uh, doing security for the first officer as well, as making sure that she stays safe and uh, addressing any other issues as far as the car that we have coming in or cars that we're stopping on the side to either issue citations or do arrests. Okay, yeah, so you have to basically monitor everything. I, I'm, I'm technically lead monitoring the line, making sure everyone stays safe in the line. Wow, okay. 10 cars come through here at one time, right? Yeah, we're getting 10 cars and then we're modifying it as uh, the officers either get tied up with uh, issuing citations or summons or arrests. So if we get uh, officers tied up, where we have multiple officers dealing with uh, multiple uh, citizens, and we're slowing it down. Uh, I think as low as we got it tonight was we had two cars in the line. Uh, we had a lot of officers tied up, but uh, for the most part, we've had about 10 cars every time we get people coming. Well, all right, looks like they're gonna stop a car right now. Hi, Rick, we got eight, we got eight. Okay, I'm here. Your name? Okay. So he's good to go. License is valid. He hasn't had anything to drink. No bloodshot eyes, nothing. So he's good to go. All right. Something to keep in mind, the officers only have 30 seconds to interact with the driver during the DUI checkpoint. So when the officer goes up to you and asks for your license, you need to produce that right away within the 30 seconds. If not, your car is gonna be pulled off to the side. They're gonna wait for you to produce the license. If you don't, you're gonna get a ticket for not having that license on you. Sir, yeah, I didn't know my tag fell off. Alright, that's cool. How are you? Driver's license and your registration. Uh, I, honestly, I think I have my wallet at home. I think you do my license. Alright, do you have any ID? Yeah. Uh, uh, Take your own I, don't have, I don't even have an ID. I'm, right. I think right. actually I do. Got no, no tag on your hey, I apologize. Hey, hey, absolutely. Hey, Maybe you were on a yeah, that. I'll do, I'll do my DUI check and everything. I'm, I'm just no, trying to get no, home. No, no, that's cool. That's cool. I live right, I live right down right. here. This is different. We're not going to registration for the motor That's all. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have it right now. Yeah. I literally just bought the bike. Oh, you got the bill sale? Huh? You got the bill sale? Um, no, 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 like, like I'm driving right now, I'm bringing, I'm bringing it back to my house right here. You just bought it? Huh? I bought it like, uh, 10 days ago. Oh okay. yeah, no, I'm waiting for the bill sale. What'd you buy? What'd you buy? Adrenaline Motors. Adrenaline right on 78th and, uh, 79th and, uh, what's the other part of it? Are they gonna give you any paperwork? Huh? Are they gonna give you any paperwork? Uh, yeah, they gave me paperwork. Where's the paperwork? It's, it's, a, it's a temporary title. It's a title of, um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a title. Take it, take it, Relax, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, sir. Hey, man, perfect. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So if you notice, there's no license plate on this bike. You have to have a license on the back of a bike. There's nothing here, nothing attached. Well, the officers conducted a thorough investigation with that bike. They were able to find a VIN number on the frame. Yes, they do have multiple VIN numbers throughout the motorcycle. When they ran that one that was fully intact, they found out that the bike was stolen. That's why the guy had no tag on the bike and he had part of the VIN number scratched off. So the operator of the motorcycle will be taking a ride to jail, the bike will be towed, and the owner of the motorcycle will be contacted and be able to pick it up. Tonight? No. Okay, driver's license is good and your tag is good, you'll be good to go, okay? Do you have a license or no? Oh, Well, the driver pulled into the checkpoint. I asked him for a driver's license. He stated to me it was suspended. I was short records check revealed that it was actually expired. It was expired for about four or five years, actually. So now the next step is he's actually going to be arrested. He's getting transported with the prison transport van to TGK, where he will continue the rest of the process. All right, guys, so the officers right now are breaking down the cones. The DOI checkpoint is officially over. We're gonna run inside the Batmobile, catch up with Officer Fernandez, and get a recap of how tonight went. Hey, Officer Fernandez, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Good, good. All right, Officer Fernandez, the checkpoint's over. Can you give us a recap on tonight? How many cars went through? What kind of arrests were made? And did anybody show DUI? It was 505 cars uh, they made contact with. 505 cars? 505 cars. How do you guys keep record of that? Beginning of the shoot, there's all the guy with the counter, and he'll count every car that goes through. Wow, so 505 cars. Out of those, how many were arrestable offenses for uh, traffic violations? Well, there so far there were about 16 arrests. Uh, most of them were either uh, no valid driver license, suspended live driver license, or expired driver license. We actually have one with two warrants uh, back from two, 2012, 2013. Another one, a motorcyclist uh, decided to come through. He had riding with a stolen motorcycle and no DUIs tonight. So no DUIs, that's a good thing. Yeah, of course. Hopefully now there can be less people with suspended licenses and APLs so that you know, get your licenses in order and be able to drive safely. Yes. So if there was a DUI, let me ask you, if there was a DUI, what would, what would be the steps that the officer takes? Well, the uh, officer would uh, take the uh, person out of the car and do some exercises. First do the eye test, which is a horizontal gaze and stagmus. Then they do the walk and turn, and then they do one leg stand. Once they, uh, if they don't pass that, uh, they're certain, they have enough clues to determine that the person is impaired, then they make the determination to make the arrest. From there, they uh, form in there under arrest, they bring them over here in the back mobile. And if a person's not under the influence of alcohol, but maybe some other kind of substance, then there's, there's, there's a special officer that comes into play, right? Yes, and that would be me um, as a drug recognition expert. If the person goes is impaired and shows that he failed the test and he blows into an instrument saying that it's triple zero, how can it be triple zero? Well, that just means that the person was not under the influence of alcohol, maybe under the influence of drugs. So that's when I come in and I uh, check his pupil size, pulse rate, uh, blood pressure, and go through the exercises again. And there's other stuff that I look for uh, to determine what type of category drugs he'd be on. All right, so tonight was a good night. No DUIs. No DUIs. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. subscribe. Have a good one. Good night.